Hi, I'm Paulo de Biaggi. I work in the STFS uh, in the TU Darmstadt. Uh, I work for the project A8, which is part of the SFB129 OxyFlame project. In order to substitute uh, and support the transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy, we need to understand the characteristics and, uh, of the fuel and the characteristics of combustion of such a fuel. This, for example, is a sample of walnut shells, uh, very thin, grinded, and this is one object of study in our project. Uh, when, transition, uh, when we are transitioning from, from coal to biomasses, the most important thing is to understand the differences between the fuel and how it will behave during the combustion process. Every solid fuel, as you can see, it undergoes uh, a solid fuel when heated undergoes a pyro pyrolysis process in which we release a lot of volatile species. These volatile species, they burn and make flames in the, in the gas phase. There is a remaining uh, solid fuel which is produced after the pyrolysis, which we call char. And the combustion of char will produce an additional combustion products in a heterogeneous process in which the air reacts with the solid char. In order to properly describe this multi-phase, multi-scale and multi-component process, we have to understand the biochemical composition of the fuel we are studying at. So this, for example, is a schematic representation of the very complex uh, chemical structure of the fuels we are studying. This intricate um, arrangement of fibers in the molecular level will, will show us how the cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin are combined together in order to form the structure of biomasses. During the combustion process, these uh, three different components will decompose in different temperatures and with different reacting rates and release different products. Every different biomass have different distribution of these three components and this is another additional complexity of using biomass as fuels to substitute coal in, chamber, in combustion chambers. One very useful way to obtain the experimental data necessary for the development of the kinetic model is to use a thermogravimetric analyzer as exemplified here in the, in the screen. A very tiny amount of uh, the, the sample we want to analyze is put into a chamber on the order of milligrams, around 10 to 50 milligrams of the sample is put there. And there is a program of heating in which you heat the biomass until the temperature of the composition and then you can observe the mass loss of that, uh, that fuel in order to describe the decomposition profile of such a, a sample. In the framework of the Collaborative Research Center, uh, we have some groups that specifically do the experiments that is required similar to uh, thermogravimetric anal analysis and also other experiments. Projects A1 and A2, A3, A6, they are very connected to the providing the experimental data to the development of the A8 model. Uh, this is one test case in which we put all the necessary information for the simulation program to, to run, all the operating conditions, the characteristics of the fuel, and then we can run the simulations. Once the simulations are done, we obtain all the necessary model outputs and then we can compare with the experimental data using post-processing scripts, using MATLAB for example. This script is an example of post-processing of the simulation and the experimental data in which we generate the plots that compare the data we produced. Once it's run, it compiles all the data and generates some plots. Here, for example, you can see the decomposition profile, the mass loss, relative mass loss of the cellulose in different heating rates, 1 Kelvin per, per minute, 10, 100, and 1000. And based on this data, we can model the kinetics for such a process. Not only the, the mass loss is important, but also the detailed distribution of products which is given by the model. The most impressive thing about the OxyFlame framework is the way the sub-projects are so well connected in which they provide the experimental data necessary and then the model is transferred to large-scale CFD simulations. And in my opinion, uh, this strong collaboration between the projects is what makes the, this CRC so relevant to paving the, the transition between fossil fuels into renewable energy for our future.